Lady Ida. Make sure you got number one out there. Okay, this is called leading up to the wedding day. This is a bigger part of the presentation and this takes more of your time and everything else like this. The picture that you actually see in the presentation is actually one that I have done at Albert River Wines. We had a hundred people. We had to cater for a hundred people. So our reception, again, um, my suppliers, um, I have not supplied the actual names of the suppliers for you and I haven't supplied you their prices for reasons. Um, but I have given you exactly the package that they have given me. So, as you can see, you obviously consult with your client. We got a hundred black or white chair covers. They can be any sort of chair cover. Um, different people have names for them. They've got different names. We all use different names. Um, There's the universal, which is usually for some tie back. Yeah. Ties back and not fitted. Get the yeah. right I call it scuba. <laughs> yeah, so I've just given you a down run of the package that is actually supplied by this supplier herself. Um, and as you can see, you get 100 black or white chair covers, you get sashes, you've got 100 of those. Now there are over that many colours, it's not funny, for a chair sash. Set, a chair sash can be satin or organza. Organza is a real shiny material. Satin is a real metallic -y material, isn't it? It's very slippery, yeah, not I hard to work with. Yeah, is sheer. Yes, it is sheer. But I have actually come across different types of sheer. It's so... It is very, I mean, you can make them yourself. You can buy them. They're probably cheaper to buy than they are to make. What's the material actually use of the chair covering and stuff? I've seen them actually more elastic, but actually come underneath the chair, underneath the feet. Yeah. The fabrics they generally use, I've seen three different fabrics used. The ones we use for Don and the Net, and that the universal size mm -hmm. knit, but it's fine, but it's not a lycra. The lycra is the ones that they use, which is the type that hooks underneath the feet. Yeah, they're a lycra chair cover. And then you kind of you'll find some of the other ones that kind of like just drop over and tie it on with a sash. Yeah. They're often done in the um, poly mechanical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. We also either give them the wishing well or a treasure chest. The wishing well is white, the treasure chest is brown mostly, or you can get white ones if you like. Depending on if you're doing vintage or chubby chic or country or whatever. But they usually only get a choice of either the, the wishing well or the treasure chest. They're mainly for money gifts. They put money in an envelope and they slip it in. They do have a gift table usually. Um, some have, some don't. We also have a guest table centerpieces and um, the supplier that actually supplies these has a list and we usually have a choice of three. So, and they're to the value of $35 each. So you might get a fish bowl. A fish bowl is round. You can get all sorts of sizes. And so you can get fish bowls for this, 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 this. You can get ones that have like a real crackled effect in the glass. We can get ones that are clear. Uh, not only that, we get diamond scatters. Now they can be plastic or they can be a real, just, um, like they look like glass, but they're not. They're crystals. Uh, not only that, you can get all sorts of colours, but mostly we just use clear because they look like diamonds. So they come in bigger or smaller sizes as well. Um, we get the candle stands. Now the candle stands can be this high or they can be so high. So they, again, vary in different sizes. Not only that, the crystal goblets, they look like a giant wine glass, but they're not a wine glass. They've got lots of beading that looks like um, glass crystal um, beads and they're all together and then you put a candle in those. So it's usually either a little church candle or you can have a tea light candle depending on what they like. What we also do is set up, we do the delivery, we do the setup, and the next day we actually come back and pick it up. So if you're in Brisbane and you've got the local areas, your supplier will actually come and do that not a problem but if you live outside the Brisbane metro area you will incur a fee unfortunately I do not know the fee 
pricing because they're all different. So the further you have to go, the, the more cost it's going to cost you. Okay, um, hair and makeup. Some places have um, just hair, you know, the, the bride will have to go there, get their hair done. Now they have a trial run, you can have two or three. They still have to pay for them, they're not free at all. Um, so usually for the bride they do a trial run plus the day of the wedding. Um, they not only do that, they do for three bridesmaids as well and it is usually for medium to long hair that the price package is put together. So if you have shorter hair, it's going to be a different cost again. But most women have long hair. We always have it, or we seem to have it past our shoulders. Um, not only that, again, they include a 30 kilometer radius. Um, the lady that does this, she also has a salon, but she's also mobile as well. Um, and she, she's a beautiful lady. All of them are very different, but you might get some that are really chatty and just love having a chat, and some are just in there and out. So most times, a bride, um, to get the hair and makeup, you're looking at hair might be 45 minutes and maybe an hour for makeup or the other way around, depending on what they want. So usually with the trial for the hair, they actually work really well. That's when you go in and you say, I want this style, but I like this style. Can you do something? As a plan, you can either go with them if you work for yourself, but if you work for a venue, unfortunately you don't have that you know, thing to do. But if you work for yourself, you want to get involved with your client. You want to be able to be their best friend. You want them to trust you and Think outside the square, go the extra mile for them. But not only that, you know, you want them to say, just just deal with it yourself, you know, and they know that their interest is your interest. Your client is your business. Like Marlis always says about events, it's about the client and it is about the client. Every client is different. Like you will find out which ones you want to work with. Not only that, it takes 30 seconds, and you'll find out, yeah, I want to take that on. You don't have to if you think that you're not going to gel. You want a stress-free bride. You don't want someone that wants this and wants that and, and it has to be, everything has to be perfect, which we know it has to be. But if they're a person that likes control, you're going to have a hard time with that person. You'll pull your hair out. Not only that, the DJ here, I will tell you his name. His name is Jay and he is from um, Explosive Entertainment. He is fantastic to work with. He does work at Elba River Wines. He charges five hours of professional service and if any if you want more extra hours, you pay $70 an hour after that. He's very professional, he's very young. He's only in his probably late 20s, early 30s. But his name is out there, why? Because he delivers a professional service and he will not let you down. If he says he's going to give it to you for a price, he'll give it to you for a price. But he always gives under that price though. He always gives you a discount. And he really is a very, very honest person. And not many DJs are honest. They want the money. They want the business, but they want the money. Whereas Jay actually wants the client. He wants them to say, I want them back. And that's what his profession is about. Photography, well this alone is a big one. Photographers can charge exceptional amounts, or phenomenal amounts as I would call it. Um, this lady here that actually is the photographer, she's a beautiful lady, she's been a friend of mine for 20 years, so I just love her to death. And she is very well known, her name is actually Linda Passfield, I don't know if you've ever heard of her in the, in the workforce, but she's been a photographer about 25 years or something now and her, she goes all over the, like between Australia and New Zealand and she really loves her job and so if people want if they want her they will actually wait for her to be available to book their wedding around her she gives all these things and um, as you can see this is actually one of her photos and this was done at Upper River Wines in 2012 um, the bride and groom there, which is Luke and um, Alinta, 
This is their wedding that I've actually based it off today. This is what they want. They have this old piano. It didn't even play, but they didn't care. It wasn't about that. We hung their pictures from the trees, just from fishing line. We just made it different. Yeah. We also got them, they had other photos where they stood there with a big frame. There's nothing in it except them. They're standing in it and they're taking all sorts of photos and they look brilliant. <coughs> right now. But that particular day, it was raining and we kept saying, oh no. You know, even though it was indoors, the problem was it was raining. We're like, they can take photos when it's raining. As a planner, you've got to run around and chase a bride. So I have come across many things. We had a bridal basket, but no one told me that the chilled bottle of wine was cracked. So when I picked it up to pour it, it broke in my hand. And I had to think quick, what do I do? So I said, oh, don't worry about it, guys. I'll get you another one. So I just get on the phone, bring me another bottle. But you have to be able to think quick and not let them panic. Because if they see you panic, it doesn't look very good. You look terrible. You look unprofessional. And you're trying to give a professional image of yourself. You can be just a beginner, but what you need to do is believe in you. Believe you can do it. Even though you might not be able to, it might, you know, at the moment, but you learn on the job more than you do as a piece of paper. You learn more hands on with, you know, doing the job. Um, I can tell you, I've made many flops and I had many mistakes in front of everyone. And I will never forget my first wedding. It blew me away. If anything could go wrong, it did. And I just went, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. No one showed me. I had to learn real quick. Suck it up, princess, because you know what? You're in this for the long term. And if you don't learn real quick to just say, okay, I made them suck, laugh at it. Don't be so serious, even though you have to be serious. But you're, you need to learn to just go with the flow, but still have that loving, caring attitude that you can just keep going. Because I'm telling you, you will make lots of mistakes. Your nails might break. Um, the bride might pop a button. You've got to know how to fix it. I have what I call a beck. I call it a beck because it's a bridal emergency kit. It's a bit like a first aid kit. And I'm not kidding. I have pins. I have thread. I have needles, I have safety pins, I have anything you can think of, nail polishes, lipsticks. I think of like Panadol and Band-Aids. I put it all together because, I'm not kidding, there's always going to be someone that needs your help. Where do you put it? You put it where you can see it, but where you can reach it without having to go, oh, I've got to run half a K to get it. You need to know where it is at all times and why. Okay, like I said, bridal flowers. This lady, um, also a personal friend of mine, I will not put 5% discount, uh, like 5% on top of her charges because she's already given you the bottom dollar. She's actually just changed this after I just got it all together. She changed it to five buttonholes, not four. The corsages are what women wear on their wrists. Buttonholes are up here on their lapels. Um, the throwaway bouquet, this is a throwaway bouquet, basically, and the lady wanted roses, but she wanted all roses, but she wasn't going to pay nearly $100 for this little rose. She would have only had six roses in it, so they put other seasonal roses in with it. Um, not only that, you get three bridesmaids as well. So, if you're looking at it, some weddings have three bridesmaids, three groomsmen, and Page boy, flower girl, bridegroom. Well, that's, you know, I have seen six and I have seen ten on each side. And that is just like a long line. So you can imagine. So that's ten bridesmaids, ten groomsmen. So you try and work the wedding to that. The biggest wedding I did was over three days for an Italian couple that I knew. We had a traditional wedding for the bride and her family on the Friday. 
we had a traditional wedding for the groom and his family on the Saturday and on the Sunday was the actual wedding. He went for three days. Did we get much sleep? No, nah, because they party. They, I've never seen so much food in my life. Never. All right. The celebrant. We have celebrants, we have ministers, and we have church pastors. They're the three that can marry you. A celebrant is usually someone that goes through a course and gets their certificate and becomes a celebrant. A church pastor has to actually do a degree and be ordained through a church to become a church pastor to marry someone. A minister also is very similar to a celebrant. Um, again, has to do certain qualifications and certificates to be able to um, marry someone else. So. We also suggest that either the bride get, you know, they can either put in for their, it's called a NOM, so it's N-O-I-M. It means, um, notice of intention to marry or intended marriage, right? So the celebrant will actually send it in um, and they usually send it in to births, deaths and marriages. You pay for it through their pricing. Their pricing is about $450. So they're usually with you a week before you have a rehearsal. Then on the day, it's usually half an hour, depending on what time frame they want, half an hour to an hour. Um, and then you have your photos and everything else like that. They do provide a run sheet, but as a wedding planner, you already have that run sheet. So you know exactly what everything's happening to what time frame. Does it happen to that time frame? No. But you know what, you've got to do it the best of your knowledge. Actually, you've got to do it better than your best. You've got to think quick because there's always little hiccups. Little hiccups could be you're out of soft drink, didn't order enough alcohol, might not have got enough <coughs> wine or beer or you've run out or the bar town finishes, whatever it be. You've got to be able to think quick. Okay, this is a Linter and Luke's wedding. This is a lolly buffet, but it had the cake as the middle decoration. So the cake is right here. Um, a Linter actually was allergic to certain foods. So the lady that decorated the cake has made it to her exact um, recommendations. Um, this is actually a two tier chocolate child cake. Um, and a chard cake is really just a chocolate cake, a bit like mud cake, but they can also change. It could be a white chocolate, it could be dark chocolate, or it could be whatever chocolate. It could be mixture, you can have chocolate and velvet and whatever it be. So they mix it, but they usually, uh, a cake is about $350, that's just for a simple one. But you can get them cheaper. Um, and so the fresh flower topper is obviously just a fresh flower and it's usually a rose. Uh, not only that, it's suitable, you cut it up to uh, 100 finger slices, which are just little pieces. So if you go through a certain service and you actually have to um, cut it into slices, they might charge you at the venue for that service and they'll charge you $4.50 to cut that piece of cake. That's simple. And not only that, they deliver around. So you can see that the lolly buffet, because her colours were green, cream, and um, um, caramel. Okay. Okay. This is on the day. That's this is only some of the things. They're not all the things. So on the day, you are there for three hours to oversee the wedding, make sure that the suppliers come in, deliver this, deliver that. Not in that. You can also stay there and a wedding, if you've got the ceremony, it usually takes about an hour, say 45 minutes at the most, then you've got photos on top of it, so you're adding about an hour and a half for all that, and then the wedding could be five to seven hours. So you might be on your feet from 10 o'clock in the morning. But a wedding planner usually goes home before the rest of the staff, they go home about 8, 8.30. Um, and not only that, this is everything that you basically just me. There is more detail, but that's about it. I'm just trying to think that's it. And that is the end of it.
However, I have a display. It's a hands-on display. It's in this room. There are 10 faults in the setting. So on your piece of paper that you've been given, the last question, right underneath that question, I want you to have a look at the setting and see what faults you can find. They're not as obvious as you think. The reason for that is because settings, when we set a table setting, it has to be perfect. But you do come across things that are not. So I've set it exactly like that so that you can see just how easy it is to not see it. And how, why we get people that go, oh, the fork's dirty or it's got this or that. Okay, so there are 10 faults on the table. I want you to list them and see if you can find them. They're not as obvious as you think. So if you want, we can just go.